We all know about the enormous numbers of people who have arrived in Europe in recent months. We all recognise the monumental naivety displayed by Chancellor Merkel in throwing open the borders of the EU to everyone claiming to be a refugee. Naivety is too kind a word. Perhaps stupidity would be more accurate. Yeah, yeah. None of us are without sympathy for those genuinely forced from their homes by war. None of us fail to feel pity for the families ripped apart and their lives destroyed. None of us would turn our backs on those most in need, those who are genuine refugees. The problem is the definition of who has become a refugee, and the definition is ludicrously broad. Those looking for better work prospects, better education, services, better health, and indeed benefits which actually genu genuine refugees are looking for. But these are not genuine refugees, these are economic migrants. Yet they have been included alongside those who are genuinely and legitimately fleeing their homes in fear of their lives. <coughs> The Geneva Convention clearly defines who qualifies as a refugee. It states such a person must be unable or unwilling to stay in a country due for fear of persecution. It is how the United Nations defines who qualifies for help. However, the EU's qualification directive goes way beyond this definition to include those who, who, who under no immediate threat of persecution. This essentially throws open uh, the continent to migration from potentially millions of people, almost all of whom are not refugees, according to the United Nations, but are economic migrants. More than a million people have arrived in the EU last year, and at least as many are expected in 2016. Many of those people come from parts of the world with different values to those of Europe, different standards of acceptable behaviour towards women. <laughs> and different beliefs of freedom of expression and religion, which has already led to the effective genocide of Christian communities in the Middle East. Now, believe it or not, the EU have finally acknowledged this is happening. And they are arriving, these people, in huge, unsustainable numbers. Germany is already facing repercussions of Chancellor Merkel's open invitation to all comers. A mob of more than 1,000 men, mostly of immigrant backgrounds, gathered in Cologne on New Year's Eve and subjected hundreds of women to atrocious levels of harassment and outright sexual assault. Of course, the EU is denying that there are any links between migration and what happened not only in Cologne, but in Hamburg, Helsinki, and other cities across the European Union. Send Merkel to Cologne, <laughs> let her get her. Yeah. Probably wouldn't want to. Uh, probably not. Let me ask you this. If it was your mother, your daughter, your friend, would you still deny anything had happened? I would go bananas. This is what happens when you open the door to countries and cultures that treat women as second-class citizens. Yeah. Then we have the attempted cover-ups by the police, the politicians and the press. To hear Swedish police say they won't report what happened because it might benefit some political parties for German politicians to say women should act differently in public. Well, that's a total disgrace. Yeah. <laughs> the people we vote for and the authorities we expect to protect our safety are cynically turning their backs on ordinary women and men because of political correctness. 
And what happens when the people who have committed these crimes are given nationality from EU countries? They will have the right to come to Britain without any criminal check background at all. In 2015, 100,000 illegal migrants were stopped trying to enter the UK. This shows the scale of the problem heading towards Britain. But what happens if we look at the other side of this crisis? More than 10,000 migrant children are missing. Europol has said that these children and young people are being forced into sexual exploitation and slavery by criminal gangs. The International Organization for Migration said it was to be expected that many of these would be caught up in exploitation. And that is without a mention of the thousands of dead or missing in the Mediterranean. So not only are these EU policies putting women under threat at home, but it's also having horrendous consequences for women and children trying to seek safety. Many of those trying to get to the EU are turning to criminal gangs to get here. And EU free movement rules allow them to be trafficked all across Europe. And because there are no border controls or criminal background checks between any country whatsoever, free movement is a huge security risk which was exploited in the Paris terrorist attack. Weapons, criminals, terrorists, can move freely around Europe and attack public places, all thanks to the European Union. The EU is putting women at direct risk and clearly it cannot cope with this crisis. So for the safety of our own women and men, for the sake of innocent victims from other countries, we have to get control of our borders. And ladies and gentlemen, we have to leave the European Union. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a short film which we're now about to show you before my colleague Jane takes the podium. The people we vote for and the authorities we expect to protect our safety are cynically turning their backs on ordinary women and men because of political correctness. It's okay for MEPs with no responsibility or power to sit here and say that we need an open door to limit the numbers of people. But people in the real world are being hurt. All of a sudden, these men began groping us. They touched our behinds. They grabbed between our legs. They touched us everywhere. We were fondled. I was groped between my legs. My friends were also fondled. My boyfriend tried to pull me away, but there was quite a big group of people, maybe 30 or 40. This is what happens when you open the door to other countries and cultures that treat women as second-class citizens. Then we have the attempted cover-ups by the police, the politicians and the press. It's even reported that the Commission won't accept that there's any link between the migrant crisis and the sexual assaults in Cologne and elsewhere. In 2015, 100,000 illegal migrants were stopped trying to enter the UK. This shows the scale of the problem heading towards Britain. A recently leaked German security and intelligence report on the migrant crisis warned, we are importing a different social and legal understanding. And the political failures to address this problem in the past have now been seen across the north of England. I was a child you know, legally, if you have to be over 16 to consent, then they should keep that in place. And if you're not 16, then do something about it. Some politicians have even said a small minority of migrant men see white girls as fair game or easy meat. Well, I'd just turned 14 and he was 24. He'd just got out of prison and straight away we spent a lot of time together. In total, for nearly two years, I think it were. And we had a sexual relationship, which, well, I thought he was my boyfriend. And according to the 2014 J report into the rape of 1,400 children in Rotherham, this problem is not confined to the past, but sadly continues to this day. 
For me, we can no longer let our values be sacrificed to accommodate imported cultural practices. No more should we allow apologists to make excuses for the behaviour of people who should respect our values over their own. No longer can we allow a duality in the application of the law based on ethnic background of a perpetrator. I want a Britain that's not afraid to take pride in its own cultural values. And a Britain that's free to continue its tradition of tolerance and freedom without a blurring of the cultural line of what is and is not acceptable. Right, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just so sorry about the, um, the technical hitch we had there. And <laughs> that's true. And, and I'm going to use an autocue, and I'm from Yorkshire, so it might even go further wrong. But uh, we'll have a go. Right, thank you, Margot, um, for your speech. And also, goody, good afternoon, everybody here in the conference. Very quickly, before I go um, into something else, I'd just like to say that there was a very important trial in Sheffield this week where we had six perpetrators of child sexual exploitation convicted and given maximum sentences for their crimes. But what I'd like to say is the real heroes of that day were the victims. They showed such courage... They, they, they showed such courage and determination and, you know, the, you, your heart has to go out to them. But there's a lot of work to do because in Rotherham there's been 16 convictions and over 1,400 suspected victims. That's not a good ratio. The, the sexual attacks that we have seen in Europe during the migrant crisis and the official response to these resonates very deeply with me. I don't have to look hard to be able to draw deep parallels between the emerging sexual threats faced by women in places like Cologne and the predatory sexual practices that have been allowed to flourish in places like Rotherham, Keithley, Rochdale and Nottingham. Cultural norms in regards to right and treatment of women is, is very different all over the world. I mean, you only have to look at the Middle East. And I'm now not saying for one minute that our cultural treatment of women is perfect in the Western society. But at least in Western Europe, uh, I won't be whipped for wearing a miniskirt or suffer the horrors of genital mutilation to satisfy my family or my community. At present, I can leave home alone without a male chaperone, drive my own car, buy a drink at a well-known coffee chain, unlike women in Saudi Arabia, who are banned from doing these same simple things. But even as oppressed women across the Middle East and Africa fight tooth and nail for the most basic protection from gender-based equality and violence, we have politicians across Europe open the doors to thousands of young male migrants many of whom are determined to retain their own cultural practices and attitudes as they migrate. A recently leaked German intelligence report warned, we are importing Islamic extremism, as well as different social and legal understandings. You cannot force democracy down somebody's throat who does not want to start and learn. And it begs the question, how do you instruct a million migrants, mainly young Muslim men, of the social mores of Western society overnight? You can't. You just cannot do it. And this highlights a major problem with mass immigration, of imported social mores, attitudes and practices that are totally incompatible with those of the host society. It's an issue that we simply cannot close our eyes to. 
And just like so many of our political cowards, both in Germany and the UK, who have tried to turn a blind eye and pretend it isn't happening. Nor does the answer lie in restricting normal rights and freedoms, as in some German uh, politicians, German politicians have suggested that their advice to women is not to smile in the street. Stay at arm's length away from strange men. The fact is, if we are to retain our own culture and the freedoms we enjoy today, we as women must face head on with these challenges. And it's presented by these darker aspects of migrant culture. No longer can we let our values slip to the point where the innocence of 1,400 children or more in one town can be sacrificed at the altar of political correctness. Yeah. Nor can we allow our politicians in both Europe and the UK tell us we are racist for highlighting the darker aspects of the migration um, culture simply because it suits them to do so for their own agenda. Instead, we must make a stand and say no more. No more should we tolerate men who regard women as their inferior and treat unaccompanied women, as some politicians in this country have said, are fair game or easy meat. I want girls to be able to smile in the street, live their lives freely, wear what they want without the prospect have to have to fight off sexual predators every time they go into town or get on public transport, as most of the women in here did of my age when we were younger. I want a Britain that not only makes its own laws, but more importantly has one law for all. And that law has to be respected by everybody, regardless of your background. Yep. I want a Britain that is not afraid to take pride in its own cultural values. Yeah. A, a Britain that's free to continue its tradition of tolerance and freedom without a blurring of the cultural line of what is and is not acceptable. Well done, There's one way to achieve this, ladies and gentlemen. And you need to leave here today and tell absolutely everybody you come across. And that is to vote for Brexit. We need to be able to govern our own country and control our own borders. Thank you.